Well, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in the U.S. for a high-stakes diplomatic visit that is getting a lot of attention in the papers today. Our press reviewer, Dipti Laurent, is here with more. Well, Aaron, he's, he's only the third uh, leader to be invited for a state visit and dinner by uh, U.S. President Joe Biden, Indian paper free press journal, hailing what it calls India's new world order on its front page. So you see uh, that visit getting a lot of coverage there. He'll be meeting with prominent uh, Indian American business owners during this visit. He'll also be leading a yoga session in New York because it is indeed today International Yoga Day, which is a U.N. initiative launched in 2015 at Narendra Modi's urging. It's why the Economist today evokes uh, Narendra Modi's yoga evangelism, a sort of clever, soft power move in which, uh, according to the magazine, uh, which has really increased Indian confidence and visibility, but also boosted Modi's um, own personal image and that of India. Uh, staying uh, on, on that topic, then, this visit is also about reinforcing India's ties with the United States, Dipti, both economically and politically. Well, that's right. I mean, Joe Biden and Narendra Modi are no doubt uh, seeking deeper ties uh, on uh, on economic defense and technological grounds. India is expected to purchase uh, U.S. drones in a multi-billion uh, dollar uh, deal uh, for the U.S. Institute for Peace. This visit also is, in a nutshell, about China, uh, about countering China's rising influence and territorial aggression, a mutual interest for both the U.S. and India that overrides even uh, certain differences uh, and disagreements, particularly when it comes to things like India's stance uh, on the war in Ukraine, uh, human rights and democracy in India. Now, Narendra Modi has given a, a, really, a fairly rare um, interview, a one-on-one -on -one interview. He gives a lot of speeches, but he, he doesn't give a lot of interviews to the press. He's given one to the Wall Street Journal today um, in which he expressed his desire to put India forward as a leader of the South. Uh, and uh, he also reiterates that India is very much on the side of peace when it comes to the war in Ukraine. You can read that interview in today's journal. All right, uh, changing gears now, uh, Dipti, and we'll stay in the United States. A judge in Arkansas has blocked the first ban on gender-affirming care. That's right. That ban uh, was a state law back in 2021 that banned gender-affirming care for transgender youth, essentially blocking medical treatment for transitioning young people. Now, this ruling from Arkansas, uh, in which the judge ruled that law unconstitutional, was really seen as a litmus test in legal challenges mounted to the legality of these state bans uh, on uh, gender-affirming care. Uh, uh, these bans made in around 20 states in the U.S., now, this ruling marks really the first time a federal court has adjudicated on the legality of such a ban, offering perhaps some hope to uh, other future legal challenges. That's in uh, today's uh, Washington Post, Darren. All right, we'll stay with the Washington Post for this next story then and take a look at how a Canadian lake could signal the beginning of a geologic age in humanity. Yeah, and not a good one either. Uh, this uh, multimedia report in the Washington Post today is well worth the browse. Uh, it looks at the Crawford Lake in Canada that was once reputed to be so bottomless that if something fell inside, it would just basically sink to the bottom. It would take forever to sink to the bottom. Well, sediment retrieved uh, from the lake last year showed that it is now full of fly ash. That's a byproduct of burning oil and coal, as well as other heavy, met uh, heavy metals. Uh, the change in sediment is uh, the changes are so stark that researchers um, uh, believe that this lake could really be uh, the line in the sand for defining a new era called uh, the Anthropocene era, a new geologic era uh, that, that basically has already been proclaimed, but they couldn't tell when it began. So this lake could really be the line in the sand for the beginning of that era. Unfortunately, though, one that's defined by the overwhelming and destructive, um, by overwhelming and destructive human behavior uh, that has irre irreversibly altered the planet's chemical composition. Well, you know what? We might as well stay on the topic of frightening new realities for this next story then, uh, Dipti. That's German paper Build announcing that it will be replacing many of its editorial jobs with artificial intelligence. Yeah, and it doesn't bode well for us journalists, Aaron. Uh, the AI revolution is well upon us and the future looks bleak. Germany's best-selling newspaper Build uh, is embarking on a radical overhaul of its business model that in, well, at least according to a message 
stories to uh, staff recently. Bosses say they'll be laying off those in roles like editors, proofreaders, and photo editors, saying that these jobs uh, for now and in the future can easily be done by AI. Perhaps AI will one day also be able to do our laundry. At least uh, for the foreseeable future, it's not the case, so we'll have to be content with washing our clothes ourselves. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, that's why you have the rise of the no wash movement, Aaron, a movement where more and more people concerned by the environment, perhaps also laziness, let's be honest, uh, are washing their clothes in some cases once or twice a year. That even extending, yes, I dare say, say it, to underpants, uh, a perilous choice, it appears, between smelling good and bad odors that's in today's Guardian, Aaron. Bizarre. I agree with you, Dipti. It's got to be laziness because I feel like <laughs> things like not taking the airplane or not eating meat are a little bit, you know, more, more, more radical decisions and more impactful decisions if it's about the environment. So uh, we'll keep it there, Dipti Laurent, with the press review. Thank you very much. And please do not forget to all our viewers that you can listen to our press review podcast and also catch more news on our website at www.france24.com.